Hello you multi. Monstros mighty Mexican mariachis. And thank you to Wicho Huerta for that malt mention. Introducing Ralphie Review 936 Extras. Now, before we go any further, <clears throat> have you poured yourself a good strong dram? Probably something peaty and intense because this is going to be quite an intense video um, and I'm going to give a perspective and an opinion here because that's what you do when you're online. A perspective and an opinion but importantly you want it to be informed so as to make it more useful and meaningful but at the same time there's no harm in having a little bit of gratuitous entertainment and bubble popping as part of the monologue so my monologue in this extras is to do with a press release recently by Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy who are the owners of Glenmorangie Distillery and Ardbeg Distillery and in particular this relates to Ardbeg which is arguably one of the most authentic of the Isla distilleries but having said that Malt Mates let's be realistic all the distilleries in Isla are authentic you, you can't say one is a better distillery because it really boils down to the calibre of casks used for whatever distillery you're at on Isla. Um, but Ardbeg, to their credit, have had a pretty good pedigree in previous years for the quality of their bottlings and their reputation. And uh, in fact, the smart stashers amongst us have known that certain distilleries like Springbank and Ardbeg are the sort of distilleries that you want to buy up bottles in advance that you're going to lay down in your stash for a few years before you open them because you anticipate that future demand is going to be greater, prices will be higher and frankly quality might not be as good as at the moment you're buying the bottles. So in the early 2000s, for example, um, when Ardbeg was re really just becoming visible again after being mothballed for a while, I, I bought quite a few bottles of the 10-year-old and the Ugadal in particular. And since then, they've had some decent bottlings. The Oa, for example, and the Black um, have been... Uh, well received by Ardbeg fans and Pete Monster aficionados. However, recently I have certainly noticed online increasing grumbles about the 10 year old, which is the stock standard available Ardbeg that everybody generally starts with. Now, the reason that the Ardbeg, and I've tasted some recently and I tend to agree, it's going downhill. Let me tell you why cask culture. It's all about the casks. I don't care what any expert tells you. Don't listen to experts that tell you that tells you that everything's fine and everything's rosy and everything's as good as it should be in fact that the distillers should be charging even more. This is baloney and bullshit. Um, but there are people out there who prepared to, to say this. They act as proxy ambassadors and cheerleaders for the category and in doing so they actually undermine the reputation of Scotch whisky because they give out fake news uh, and this is why you're better to don't just take my word for it but go on to the forums uh, go on to the review sites just open a search engine page and put in a whisky and put reviews after it and just see what comes up in in the the feedback and use that as part of your assessment for deciding whether to buy a whiskey or not. And if you are buy, going to buy a, a bottle of Ardbeg and you haven't bought one before, you probably say to yourself, well, actually, you know, this, ain't, this isn't bad. I'm quite enjoying this. But the thing is, you have got no historical point of reference, whereas many seasoned whiskey hacks most definitely do. 
and there's many particular Isla fans who have gone to Fischiel, for example, the annual Isla Whiskey Festival, uh, and anticipation and really looking forward to the special bottlings for that event, um, and being disappointed. Disappointed at times with the quality, and disappointed at times with the price of the bottles, and then disappointed with both the price and the quality. And this is in recent years, this is a growing trend, and it's not good and it's not healthy. And into this mix and into this situation, Ardbeg's marketing team come like a great big clumsy elephant straight from presenting handbags and jewellery to the world and designer accoutrements. Here they come to put their big stamp of fashionista um, elitism onto Scotch whisky. And the way they do it is they create absurd exemplary examples that just get loved and adopted by some, some online commentators who should know better and of course the traditional media because the traditional media will never ever let facts get in the way of a story that sells what they're trying to sell. So here we have, I've got it up in my laptop here, a uh, rare Scotch whisky cask sells for a record £16 million in quote-unquote remarkable piece of liquid history. It goes on to say that a cask of single malt distilled in 1975 at Ardbeg Distillery has sold to a private buyer in Asia, a Chinese business person. And... Um, it has smashed the record books. Yeah, because that's what, I mean, if it didn't smash the record books, there would be no point in having a press release. You've got to have something outrageous, absurd and superlative that's going to grab people's attention. And the whole idea is to present in a vague, um, poignant, easy to digest soundbite that Scotch whisky is incredibly value, valuable and that our bag is really, really, really valuable. Except when you speak to genuine Ardbeg whisky drinkers, they will tell you about the disaster that is the recent bottling of Ardbeg. Um, in fact, the last two bottlings have been pretty much disasters. They've been very disappointing because the calibre of casks used for maturation has been poor. It raises the question now. Do they have any decent casks at all in the distillery warehouses? Or have they put them all out and gradually they're working their way into the more inferior and inferior casks to satisfy the demand for a brand whose reputation was set a few years ago when standards were most definitely higher? Should, should we even risk buying? So if you're an experienced whisky drinker, and you've gone out and with the most recent bottling, uh, over £100 a bottle at the moment, it's £150 a bottle for a non-age statement, innocuous, vague, vacuous, shallow, superficial, anemic version of our big, which is just causing profound disappointment right across the loyal fan base that are the Ad Ard Beg faithful. They've been betrayed by marketing, betrayed by the owners of this distillery. And I want to state for the record that I, in no way are the people at the distillery responsible for this. The people who actually live on Isla and work in Ardbeg Distillery, work at Ardbeg Distillery, are really doing the best they can. But unfortunately, the people who own the company and make the decisions affecting this distillery are increasingly showing signs, in my opinion, of complete professional incompetence. And this is reflected fair and square in the increasing inferiority of what's been bottled. Even the unembeshed, the five-year-old wee beastie, um, even that... When I recently tasted it after having bought a bottle, I could tell it was younger and fresher and, and more immature and less rewarding. 
So it's amazing how quickly this has happened and not on top of that you've got the Art Bog pantomime. That's what we'll call it, a pantomime, in which the distillery engaged in a, a, a non-fungible token just before the entire crypto market collapses. Way, you know, great timing. Way to go. Um, if, you, if you're not leading your following and the whiskey industry has been really following that trend, trailing behind miserably, um, and nobody's talking about it. And, and, and this is because marketing people are utterly detached from the core values of these brands and what it represents to the customer. They're treating it like a designer handbag, something you could manipulate uh, uh, and, and, and just impose some pretty superficial glossiness on because that's what works in the luxury industries. It's just what works. Because people who are paying over the top for decent quality, but at a ridiculously high premium, if they've got the money, you know, let them get on with it. The mugs, they're just getting, they're just getting scammed, really. Um, but they want to participate in it because it's a show of money, a show of wealth. And what this is what you have here. Um, a customer's paid a staggering, this is the way they describe it in the press release, a staggering 16 million for a cask of whiskey. You'd have think they'd started at something modest like 5 million. 6 million. No, no, it's 16 million. You see, the problem is, the next time they do this stunt, whether it be Macallan or Ardbeg or, or some other distillery trying to be pretentious like Diageo's Brora, new Brora, They've got to go completely bonkers about it. They've got to go to 50 million because that's the only way you're going to grab the headlines and, and really, really impress all the gullible dafties that this is such a remarkable and marvellous and, you know, valuable item. No, it's not. Uh, I mean, good luck to the customer. Um, they're going to get around 88 bottles out the cask over five years worth alleged this is at least the worth and no, it's not worth it bullshit it's not worth 36 thousand pounds a piece but this is the way they're presenting it these are 36 pounds a bottle 36 thousand pounds a bottle to the customer over the next five years and i'm sure that on top of the bottles they'll get a whole load of extras but that doesn't get mentioned in the press release. It doesn't get mentioned in the marketing. All the other sweeteners and the nudgers and the motivationals to get this client to spend £16 million to buy one barrel of whiskey. There's much more to this than mean, that meets the eye. It comes across as disingenuous, fake, very unscotch-like. And um, we can only ask what, what's going to be the next absurdity, the next ridiculous, piss-taking absurdity. Uh, time will tell, but in the meantime, perhaps uh, once uh, Glen Morangy Company, um, LVMH, the owners of Ardbeg Distillery have got over wetting themselves with excitement with this one. Perhaps they might even catch up with a few comments online from experienced Ardbeg fans who are calling out the inferior quality of the 10-year-old um, and also recent um, bespoke bottlings which are most certainly absolutely not worth the money being asked. And um, here's some, some advice. Because I've, I've, I've been around whiskey for quite a number of decades now. Don't play with fireworks too much, Ardbeg. Because, you know, you're going to let off a rocket. And it'll just basically be a damp squib. It'll be a two-bob rocket. And your magnificent fireworks show will just fall in deaf ears. Because people have moved on to other brands. To, to, to get something with more integrity more respect, more consideration for the customer instead of frankly just taking the piss out of people. 
Um, this I have to conclude is a personal opinion. Um, you know, if if it works for them, good luck to them. But as far as I'm concerned, to make it easier for my reviews and so as not to bring you too much bad news, malt mates, I think I'll just completely avoid Ardbeg reviews for the rest of the year unless I can find them in independent bottlings, which is highly unlikely. There we go. There you have it. I'm just, you know, it's just an opinion. It's just in a perspective. It goes against the grain. Do you know that? goes against the grain. Because so many people buy into the bullshit marketing. And don't even question how much this is all costing. In fat cat salaries. And in outrageous resourcing of all these little fantasy trips that marketing people go on. As they absurdise the brand. And as they take the piss out the customers with their suit, with their contrived superlatives, and um, and frankly, disingenuous crap. It's an opinion from the bothy, and there you have it. I hope you find this refreshingly different from what you're getting out there. Uh, and what you're seeing in the magazines, in the newspaper. For goodness sake, do not believe the newspapers. Just do not believe them. Have a look at who actually owns these newspapers and what sort of societies they're in. You don't have to scratch the surface far before you see some very familiar and regular patterns of, of gaslighting, serious gaslighting of the masses. And it's not just the traditional media that do this, whether it be newspapers or television. It's marketing's increasingly doing this. All the fake marketing that we get, we've got to learn to brush it aside because the premium we pay for that is just too high in relation to the cost of the bottle of the whiskey. And inevitably, it's in their interests, in the marketing people's interests, to degrade the quality of the whisky so they are needed more, so they can build their empires faster and taller and, and have them better resourced. It's real life. Thank you for watching. Join me again um, for my next review, which will be another blended whisky, by the way. A classic blended whisky, aged 12 years. I'm going to be giving it a spin. Um, it's probably not going to be good news, but hey ho, this is what you get with opinions and perspectives. See you soon, malt mates. Bye bye.